Uh, thank you, Tim, for leading us in worship. Uh, <coughs> it's great to uh, be with you uh, in your homes. Uh, welcome to uh, Christian Life Church Online. Well, I add my welcome. It is so good that we are, have this technology to be together. So as Tony shared, we are in a theme this year of built to last because we want to build uh, our life strong in God. And the first series was uh, based on the love of God, the foundation of the love of God for us. And in this series now, ground up, devoted to God, it is our response to God. And our response is always a, a response to the love of God. Uh, God is always the initiator. Key verse in this series, uh, this series, which is the ground up devoted to God, is Matthew 22, where Jesus was asked what the, the, uh, the greatest commandment was, and he replied, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Uh, uh, the Christian life, first and foremost, is loving God out of response for his love for us. So last week, uh, <coughs> JP introduced this series and looked at relationship. Today, the aspect of uh, devoted to God that I want to look at is something, is a response that comes from, is a response to God's kindness to us. And it is a gift from God that leads to life. And what I want to preach on this morning is repentance. Repentance. Now, <clears throat> you may have a reaction to that word. You may be thinking right now, oh yeah, so now we've talked about God's love, and we've talked about relationship with God, and now we're flipping it over the coin, uh, so God's basically telling us that we've got things wrong, and we need to buck our ideas up and get our lives sorted. So if that's kind of a reaction that you have, then we need to think again about repentance, because that's not what it is. The call to repent is an expression of the love and kindness of God. Romans 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 said this, Do you not know that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Repentance is a result of God's kindness to us. It, it leads us to repent. His love and kindness. So, what is repentance? What do I mean by this word, repent or Repentance. So the Bible is written in two languages, it's written in Hebrew in the Old Testament and the Greek in the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, the word that we translate repent uh, means to turn back or to turn around, especially it's used in the context of turning away from sin and turning towards God. So it's, it, it, it means turn. And, and you, if you read it in the Old Testament, it always means turning away from sin and turning towards God. The Greek uh, in the Greek, the word they use is metanoia, which means uh, change of mind. So it's about changing the way we think about things, to think like God, resulting in a change of action, that we turn away from sin and turn, away, turn towards God. And, and it is, as I said before, it's both a gift and a command. So in Acts 11, uh, it, the <clears throat> the, the, the apostles were talking together and they realized this, that God has given to the Gentiles, that's non-Jews, as well, the gift of repentance, which leads to life. It's a gift from God, a good gift. And it also is a command. In Acts 17, Paul says this, In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. But repentance, re repenting must be understood in the light of the first series that we preached, which was the love of God. That God loves us unconditionally. He, he showed it on the cross when he took our sin. Uh, he, he, he pours out his grace and love to us unconditionally, always. And his gifts to us are good. They're always good. And his commands to us are always good. God didn't give the Ten Commandments to spoil our fun. God gave the Ten Commandments to help us live well, to enjoy life, to have a good life. So his commands to us are good. And his command to turn away from sin is good because God loves us so much 
he sees that sin is something that stains our life. Sin is, is not good for us. It, it, it marks us and he calls to turn away from things that are wrong, which is called sin. Uh, so, just to say, uh, now I want to say, why is it, why are we talking about this in this series of foundations? Why is it foundational? If we look at um, a few verses, in the New Testament, there's a guy called John the Baptist who came to prepare the way for Jesus. And it says in Matthew, this is his message. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The first word he preached was, Repent. And then a couple of chapters late, next chapter, Jesus comes along and starts preaching. And from that time, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And then when the, ch the first sermon of the church, which is uh, generally regarded as the sermon that Peter preached at the day of Pentecost, he preached the sermon, he didn't start with, with the word repent, but it says in, a, in verse 27, when the per people heard this, that's his sermon, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent. First word, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that the, the, what was preached by the, the apostles, by Jesus, by John the Baptist included right up front and center was this word repent. But you notice that both John the Baptist and Jesus put it into a context, a reason for repenting. He said repent for the kingdom of heaven is near or in some version it's come. So the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God as uh, some of the other Gospels call, call it, Kingdom of Heaven and Kingdom of God, was an idea that the hearers would be familiar with. The Jews, the, the, those that were listening, uh, had this understanding from the Old Testament that the present age that we all live in, that they lived in, would one day give way to a new age that they called the Kingdom of God. And it would be led by a king called the Messiah. And they were waiting for this kingdom they were waiting for this Messiah to come. And when Jesus came, he, he, he came and announced that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, had come. It was a bit different from what they expected. They expected that immediately when it came, that it would overthrow the kingdom, uh, the present kingdom, and that the king, the Messiah, would rule in every area. But what we have is that now we live in an age where the kingdom of this world rules and the kingdom of God at the same time. But the kingdom of God, they understood, would have certain characteristics. Uh, they were this, justice, deliverance, peace, joy, comfort, healing, and the presence of God. So that's what they were expecting when this kingdom came. And Jesus <coughs> said, it's here, it's come near, because actually the king of the kingdom, Jesus himself, had come near. And so what he said was, you need to repent because this kingdom's come near. And who doesn't want though? Everybody was looking forward to this, these things. Who doesn't want justice and deliverance and peace? Because the opposite is injustice and strife. And the opposite of joy is sadness. The opposite of comfort is discomfort. So who wouldn't want that? But when it came, Jesus said, because it's here now, you need to change your attitudes and actions. You need to, certain things you need to stop doing. You need to stop injustice. You need to stop causing strife. And you need to turn to a new way of life. You need to become, uh, live like the king lives. You need to live like Jesus. And, and so this gift, this call, this command to repentance was because there's a new kingdom come. And we want to be, we want to be people to fit into the kingdom. To fit into the kingdom we have to turn away from sin and towards God and live how God wants. Now this is um, a choice that God gives us. It's not an option. It's a choice. And so it's free will. Now our free will is a very powerful thing. What we choose is, is great power. Whether, even for good, bad or good, it has great power. But when we choose... And our will aligns with God's will. 
then we are choosing to live according to the kingdom of God. And the power of the kingdom of God kicks in. The Holy Spirit, God himself, assists us in that change towards the kingdom. And so this is the thing that makes the difference. We've talked about God's love. We've talked about the cross. We've talked about God's unconditional love, his desire to be our friends. But until we make a decision to turn and follow God, to live for him, then for us nothing has changed. We're still far away from God. The power of repentance is the key. And sometimes I feel it's the missing step in what we say. It's easy to say God loves you unconditionally and he wants to be your friend. But there is a requirement to turn away f from the things that harm us. Sin, that, that's called. So he's, not, <coughs> it, it's, he's, he's saved us not to sin, he saves us from sin. So sin matters to God. He wants us to turn away from it and turn towards God. I heard somebody once say that repentance, turning away from sin and toward God, is like power-assisted steering in a car. If you've ever driven a, a, probably a very old car or a car that's broken that, that doesn't have power-assisted steering, when you turn, it's really hard work. You have to really force the wheel round. Um, but all cars these days, they have power-assisted steering, which means you are in control, it goes where you steer it. But when you start to turn the steering wheel, then the power of the power-assisted turns and uh, kicks in and helps you to go in that direction. So you're not forcing it round. And that is what repentance is like, that when we turn a little bit to God, his power comes in. His power comes to help us. And so it starts when we start to see sin. We understand that God has put commandments, he's put laws in to help us. And when we see these things as God sees them, then we, we, we think differently about them. And it's not just the big things like murder and adultery and stealing, <coughs> um, but uh, wrong attitudes. Hate in your brother, Jesus said, was sin. Wrong attitudes in our heart, unkindness, unkind words, they're all wrong. And when we start to see these things as God sees them, and we're open and confess them to God, and say, God, I want, I want to change. We make a decision to change, then the power of God comes in. I read in Acts there that, that when Peter said, was replied to the question, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized. And there was two results to that. Forgiveness of sins, that God wipes our sins away. He wipes the past away. And he said, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because when God asks us to turn away from sin, he's asking us to do something that by ourselves we cannot do. Only by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. I want to just emphasize that, that when we repent and we turn away from sin, it towards God the main thing we're doing it's not just turning away from sin not even mainly turning away from sin it is about turning to God that we are turning to God himself because you know, it's about relationship it's not by a set of rules don't do this anymore do this we're turning to live a life as God wants us to have a relationship with God and the power of God then kicks in as, as I, I said, the forgiveness and the, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. In the Old Testament, there's a great prophetic promise that looked forward to the time of Jesus. It's in Ezekiel 36. And Ezekiel writes this, looking forward to the future. And he says, I, in that time, I will gather you from all nations and bring you home again to your land. Then I will spring clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take you out your stony, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you, so that you will follow my decrees, and be careful to obey my regulations." And you will live in the land that I gave your ancestors long ago. 
You will be my people and I will be your God. I will cleanse you from your filthy behaviour. I just think this is so beautiful, this idea that God gives us a new heart. You see, to turn away from sin and turn towards God is not, an, it's an act of our will, but it's not by willpower. Because if it was that, we would all fail all the time. And we do fail frequently, but it would be completely impossible to ever do anything right for God. But God says he will put a new heart and a new spirit in us. He, he changes our desires so that we desire to do what God wants to do, us to do. I hope you get that. It's not, this call is not just to clean up your act, to do things better, to get a better life. It is to receive the power of God within to do that. Because by our own power, we cannot do it. God gives us a new start and he gives his Holy Spirit to help us walk according to him, uh, his ways. I remember, I remember when I became a Christian uh, many years ago now, and I remember understanding the, the one thing that I had to turn away. I, I, I didn't, at that time, understand it in terms of sin. <coughs> uh, uh, what I understood was quite simply this, the sin the thing that was wrong in my life was that I was not living with any regard to what God wanted in my life. I would not invited God to have any part in my life. I never made it. I believed in God. I believed he was there. I believed that Jesus had died on a cross for me and resurrected. But I never, I never even understood that God wanted me to give my life to him and live my life the way uh, he wanted it. And, and when I heard that, fir my first reaction was, I don't really want to do that because, thank you God, I've got my plans for my life and I don't really want you to decide what you're going to want to do with my life. Thank you very much. But one thing I knew about right and wrong at that time, it was very clear, the right thing to do was to follow God and what he wanted for my life. And the wrong thing to do was not. It was that simpler choice. It wasn't a list of things I had to stop, a list of things I had to start doing. It was this, I, I make Jesus, uh, make God my Lord. And now there came the day when I decided, yeah, I have to do this. There's no way. God, God, God has convinced me that this is the way forward for me, that he's got a plan and he wants me to follow it. And I remember praying, <coughs> praying and, and committing my life to follow God. Uh, that's what I called it. What it was was basic repenting. It was turning away from my own life and turning towards God. And I did that. I prayed a prayer that I read in a booklet. I remember first, I remember two things very clearly. One was like a weight was lifted off me that I, I felt relieved that I'd done the right thing. And, you know, as I read before, Peter preached repent and be baptized and your sins will be forgiven and at that point I knew my sins were forgiven well I know I just knew I'd done the right thing I didn't know it in those words I just knew a weight was lifted off and he said you will receive the Holy Spirit I didn't know I'd never heard of the Holy Spirit but I say that when I woke up the next day I knew that God was with me in the room he was with me I, I didn't see anything, I didn't hear anything, it wasn't an emotional thing. I just knew the presence of God and the Holy Spirit had come to live with me. And that was amazing, it was unexpected, but that's what God promises. He promises forgiveness of sins and he promises his Holy Spirit. And, and he changes my, changes, changed my desires, he changed my plans, I just wanted to live for him. And only God can do that by his spirit. So I know from the scriptures and from experience that repentance, to turn from sin and return to God, is a powerful thing to change our life. That was my first experience. But I want to say that repentance is not something we do once and that's it. You know... <coughs> 
repentance for first becoming a Christian doesn't make us perfect that one prayer that I made didn't make me perfect I, I know that is probably a surprise to some of you that I'm not perfect um, but I'm not and I was thinking, we've, in this series that we've preached, we have used the, the, uh, the, the story of the prodigal son, as it's called, many times. And that's the story of a, a son who, who disrespects his father. He asks for his inheritance before the father dies. And he takes it, goes away from his father, goes completely away, wastes all his money and inheritance, and ends up <coughs> um, destitute and starving. And there's this act of repentance where it says he's, he came to his senses and he says, I will go back to my father. And I want to say, although yes, he did come to his sentence, senses, his repentance, although it was deep and real, was far from complete. Far from complete. What you see is, he says, in my father's house, everyone, even the servants have food. So he'll go back. This was not a response of the heart. This was a response of his stomach. He wanted to go and get fed. But when he came back, his father embraced him. He hugged him. He put the best robe on him. He put the ring on him. He, 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 he made a party for him. He welcomed him totally. But there was a, no sense of, I want to have relationship back with you father that wasn't what he said he wanted food now when we come back to God when we turn it's important that our it's heartfelt repentance a heartfelt turning to God but it's not perfect it's not perfect but God embraces us anyway I want to say sometimes we might feel guilty that as Christians we have still so many issues and stuff we've got to sort in our life God is just happy, firstly that we're home, but he's going to continue working in our lives. And so he, repentance, turning away from things that aren't right, and turning to God, is a continual through our life. It's been interesting living in lockdown. So we're, <coughs> we're, we're together in our house, working at home, the children at home, and when you're all squeezed together, maybe some things start to come out that didn't before. Attitudes of impatience. I'm not talking about anybody else in the house, I'm only talking about me. And God starts to point out these things. And we need to change. Why? Because God has a goal for us. And that goal is that we are like Jesus. Who doesn't want to be like Jesus? Well, I do. He's beautiful. As we sang, he, he's, he's, he's our vision. He's the one that we want to be like. God has a purpose for us, and his, his destiny is that we become like Jesus, like him. So there's this beautiful, loving call from God to repent, to turn from what's not good for us, what's not right for us, what doesn't fit within the kingdom, and turn to God in deep repentance, but also receive his power to change, receive the spirit, which is the initial way that we turn to come to God to receive his love, but also something continual in our life. It continues in our life that we are continually being challenged by God to change some things and turn to him for the power. So I want to I want to I want to just close by saying if you have never turned to God, if you've heard about God's love, if you know that God loves you, but you haven't made that step of turning to him and saying, I want to live my life for you the way you want it, then I urge you to make that choice. It is the best decision you'll ever make. Because even though you think, you might think, I've done too much bad, I'm too far away, you might think that, you might think, I can't change. I tell you, you can't can't change but the power of God in you can change you I know that so you've not done you've never too far away you're never too weak to change but if you turn sincerely to God and just say to him forgive me I want to follow you 
He will give you his spirit and he will enable you to follow him. And secondly, if you're a Christian, you know what? We all slip up very badly from time, continually in our lives, but God always receives us back. If we repent and turn to him and say, God, uh, I want to come back to you. He gives us the power continually. So I want to pray. Father God, I want to pray that by your spirit you touch us in the areas that we need to put right. We need your power. That you'd help us to turn from what's wrong and turn to you, Father, to sincerely in our hearts. Father, I pray that if this, yeah, as people are listening, the stuff we know we need to change, that they would not hide it from you, Lord. Not feel ashamed, but confess it to you sincerely and say, God, I want to turn away from this. Please help me. Hear their heart. Hear their prayer, Lord, and help them. Father, as people turn into you for the first time, come by your spirit and fill them. Give us power. In Jesus' name. Just want to add, you know, the other thing that Jesus told his disciples to preach, and the way he preached, as he preached to repent and he preached the good news of the kingdom, he preached about healing, he told his disciples to heal. As we were worshipping, I felt that God wanted to also heal. Uh, and I want to pray just for two areas there. Mental health, obviously, something that's greatly in the news that perhaps there's a lot of more anxiety about. But also felt God... To, uh, Tell me that he showed me that he wanted to heal uh, some legs with pain and some difficult movement. So I'm going to pray that now. Father, I want to pray. If that's you, just respond. Reach out to God. Put your hands on your legs if it's legs. And, and just put your hand on your heart if you know that you need to God to help you emotionally, mentally. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for those that are reaching out to you now for healing. You come by your spirit. Heal legs. I pray for pain to be gone to movement to come back. I pray for hearts and minds that you bring your peace, your kingdom of peace and joy and comfort. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to hand back to Tony and Leslie who are going to lead us in.